This is the second video about my House of the Dying Sun inspired uh, 3D space shooter in Godot. For this one, I have revamped the weapon system like completely. There is a new component called the weapon handler that uh, lets me attach as many guns as I want and switch between them. The guns and bullets now each have a parent class that they all inherit from, which has helped with flexibility and reduced a lot of the code uh, duplication that I was having before. I've got all kinds of new weapons in this version right here. We've got uh, seeking missiles. We've got laser guided missiles that follow a point in front of the player. We've got uh, a little shotgun pellet spray shot. We've got a hit scan laser. Bullets can be uh, customized to apply a bullet hole decal to whatever they hit. I think only one of the bullets currently has that, but it's literally just as easy as dropping the bullet hole decal into an export variable. I'm going to go through a lot of the code. Uh, I recorded this when I was sick, so I'm going to sound a little gravelly, so sorry about that. Also, this video is way longer than I meant to make it. Um, in the future, I'm going to either just really briefly show video of new stuff I've added without showing the code or I'm going to do a dedicated tutorial because this took me a lot longer than I had wanted to edit it down. Since making this video I have literally already added all the features that are scrolling across the screen. The game sounds so much better and it looks a little bit better as well and the code is greatly improved uh, under the hood for further changes. Every time I mention some link to some tutorial or other resource that I used in the video, I will make sure all those links show up in the video description. And if I remember, put them in the comments as well. I'll pin a top comment. As always, this code, this project is available on GitHub. Uh, that link will be down there as well. Um, I think the probably the main thing that people might find frustrating when they download it and try and run it is that I am currently using a USB Xbox controller plugged into my PC for all the controls. If you don't have one of those, if you want to use mouse and keyboard, you're gonna have to redo the, the, the input system. I am not interested in like doing mouse controls at this time. I don't know, maybe at a future date, maybe if a lot more people get interested in it, we can add that in. But for now, I'm happy with the controller. I like the controller. I, I like, if I had a joystick, I would use a joystick, but this is what I got. So uh, hope uh, people enjoy. Weapon handler lets you switch between weapons. So this is based on code I got from this Udemy course right here. And the basic idea is simply that each child of the weapon handler is gonna be a weapon. And every time you click a particular button, it will switch to the next weapon. Basic idea is you loop through all the children. And if the particular weapon is the one that was chosen as active, you tell it to activate. All my guns have an activate procedure, or a function, and you tell everything else to deactivate. Change weapon literally just increases the index, the index of the children, like index you know, zero is the Gatling gun, index one is the auto-seeking missile launcher, and so on. Shooting is done by calling a shoot function in the weapon handler that passes that shoot command down to the gun itself. Gatling gun was the gun that I basically had before I revamped the whole weapon system. It fires in bursts, I pull the trigger once and it fires multiple shots. Every single gun is just a node 3D and it's the location the bullet emerges from. I've changed some of the exports for the guns. Only the burst gun has a burst total and a burst rate basically how many shots are included in a burst. So it's a six shot burst at a rate of 12 per second. So I believe those six shots go off in a half second. Uh, the bullet itself, what is actually fired from the gun, what is created and sent on its way. Damage, bullet speed, bullet timeout. Use near miss. Um, basically for any gun that's attached to the player, uh, this should be unchecked, this should be off. And for anybody else, it should be on. So the player won't hear their own bullets whiffing when they fly away but any incoming fire if it misses the player it'll make this whiffing noise as it's uh, flying by spread in degrees so how much spread there should be on the gun and then how many simultaneous shots so if i make this like five every single shot will actually be five shots you'd want to do this for like a shotgun you can drag and drop into these export locations, a firing sound, a reloading sound, a gun animation, a muzzle flash, uh, whether or not there's a ray, a ray cast 3D that is used with this gun. If it doesn't need it, it doesn't have it. Collision exceptions. I tried to make this an array, but I couldn't figure out how to 
drag and drop nodes into an exported array. So I just made two of them because the exceptions are that the player's bullets shouldn't hit the player's hitbox or the player's shield hitbox. So those are the two exceptions that I just dragged into here. Uh, and those are passed along to the bullets. So there's no self collisions. I was doing this previously by simply moving the bullet creation location to outside of the hitbox, but that was kind of a pain in the ass and it had to be fiddly readjusted every time any like hitbox sizing changed. So now I'm doing it this way. The auto seeking missile launcher is just a basic gun that has uh, an auto seeking type bullet uh, attached to it, and I did modify the speed and timeout and fire rate on it, but it's just a basic gun. The only thing special is actually the bullet itself. Hit scan gun, so I have a special gun now that uses hit scans. It doesn't actually have a bullet. It doesn't fire one. Uh, it just instantaneously does damage to a target. If it's ray, it does have a ray cast, uh, hits the target. I'm a, a new convert to the church of ray casts. I love them, uh, and they're awesome, so I'll talk more about those. Laser shotgun, this is just something I had fun with. It's not actually a regular gun, it's creating a bunch of ray casts, in this case however many simultaneous shots are, and it's detecting if there's collisions with those rays, and it will undoubtedly deal damage. It's a hit scan weapon, but it's a little weird in that it will um, only deal the damage after a short delay so that it looks like the bullet actually dealt the damage rather than the ray dealing the damage instantaneously. The bullet actually is responsible for dealing the damage, but it's a guaranteed hit if the ray cast connected when the trigger was initially pulled. Laser guided launcher. Um, this weapon was really fun and it looks very pretty. It's immensely hard to use, but the idea is that the bullet will seek out whatever the ray cast of this weapon is pointing at. And the raycasts are just attached as children, right? So the laser guided launcher has a raycast 3D that I uh, attach as a child and then drag and drop into the export variable over here. Likewise, the hit scan gun actually has a few things. It has uh, the raycast 3D, and then it also has um, a node with an animated uh, laser mesh here is what I named it. It's just a 3D mesh that's like a really long, thin cylinder with an animation player. That is the zap of the... Uh, weapon being fired. All right, let's go look at the guns. So gun scene is the parent class of all my guns. So anything that was shared in common by all the guns I have in here, it's just a node 3D with a timer for the firing rate. It doesn't actually have anything else at all, um, but it's got a lot of export variables. What is the bullet that this gun will fire? How much damage, bullet speed, bullet timeout should it have? All that good stuff. I'm gonna scroll past a lot of this. Um, there's just a Boolean that gets set to true when the command to fire is given. And then as soon as physics process updates uh, after this is set to true, the gun will fire. I'm gonna scroll past a bunch of here. Just the exporting of the sounds and the animation player and the ray cast, if any, collision exceptions. All right, when the gun is instantiated, we're gonna calculate the range based on you know the bullet speed and the bullet timeout. Also, if there is audio for the firing sound, let's get that all set up. If there's a reload sound, let's get that all set up. Oh, I'm actually using process instead of physics process. I'm not sure if that really matters too much. So it's gonna be like less accurate, less um, immediate when the trigger is pulled. That's my understanding. But I don't know, for now it's working fine. I'm just gonna leave it in process. So if firing is true, call the shoot actual function that does the actual shooting. Yeah, my function names are not great here, but we're gonna deal with it. So shoot is what gets called when the trigger gets pulled. Shoot actual is what's actually gonna instantiate the bullet. So the shoot function takes in who is the shooter, like the player or an NPC. What is the target, if any, and is it powered up? Which like the uh, missile, the seeking missile, which I didn't even show because it was in the last video and I haven't changed it at all. If you release it right as you acquire missile lock, you get like a powered up version of it. But basically, uh, if we are actually going to fire, so if the firing rate timer is stopped and we're ready to fire again, then animate all the animations if they exist, set firing to true, restart the timer, and uh, set up the uh, shoot data. So data that we're gonna need for later. Restart the timer, just literally restarts the timer based on the fire rate. Set up the shoot data, creates a new shoot data object. It's basically a structure that has some a bunch of variables in it. It will keep track of who the shooter is, who the gun is, how much damage, all this stuff. And it passes this object to each bullet that gets created. 
I went back and forth on this. I, I could just pass in the shooter, the target, and the gun itself, because the gun has all the rest of this data, and the bullet could just ask the gun what it needs to know. But if the gun gets destroyed, if it gets Q-freed before the projectile or the bullet does, then... Uh, then there's weird issues that I got to deal with and like potentially the projectile could lose and from access to information that it needs so I'm just leaving it like this for now scrolling on down shoot actual is going to loop through however many simultaneous shots they're supposed to be instantiate those bullets add them as a child not of root but of global main scene main 3d basically different levels are all loaded as children of this particular node and that node gets um, all its children deleted when a different scene gets loaded so i did make some changes i'm not actually adding to root anymore which should have been fine because the bullets queue free themselves but what i found was that if i fired some of my longer lasting bullets and then switched levels rather quickly switched scenes rather quickly the bullet was still there because of course it was because it's a child of root i didn't really want that so now i'm being more careful where i add my bullet children or any children and i tell the bullet uh, i give the bullet a reference to the shoot data let me just open up shoot data briefly it's literally just a class that has just a bunch of variables it doesn't even have any functions at all continuing in gun.gd the parent class of all my guns so guns can be deactivated we will set their process to false we will stop any animations that are occurring and activate does kind of the opposite and that's the parent class that's it so all the guns inherit from this gun parent class. Let's check out some of those child class guns. So the burst gun, it has just some extra variables for bursting. Uh, it's got its own burst timer because a burst takes a certain amount of time. So that's added in in this inherited scene. It, in, it extends gun here. How many shots are in a burst? What's the rate? And an internal private variable, let's call it, for tracking how many shots into the burst we are. Now it's processing is gonna override the parent class because it's gotta check if it's firing and the burst timer is stopped. We can fire another burst in that situation. Shoot actual is gonna call its parent class, but then it's also going to deal with burst specific things. And then the deactivate is slightly different. It calls the parent classes deactivate, but then it also resets the burst data. And that's it, that's the burst child class. So that's kind of awesome, I love that. I love that it's short. Let's check out the hit scan gun. So the hit scan gun also inherits from gun. So this is really a, a specific implementation that we have here, including the model. And for now, I'm fine with that. Basically, uh, the ready function calls its parent class, checks if a ray is attached to the gun. That's necessary uh, for this one. Otherwise, how are you doing hit scans? So I print an error message if I've forgotten to attach a uh, raycast 3D to the gun, which is easy to forget. <laughs> By default, the rays are going to be dis disabled. This is absolutely premature optimization, but I'm doing it anyway because I like that sort of thing. And then I re-enable the, or sorry, I disable the ray um, for efficiency purposes, and then I'll enable it later on. Is that possibly gonna bite me in the ass? Quite possibly, but we're gonna go with it anyway. Shoot actual completely overrides the parent class's uh, shooting function and set firing to false so that we've completed our shooting by the end of this force an update on that ray check to see what it ran into if anything is it colliding no actually i could put this inside the if statement now that i think about it right that should work i'll test that before i release this on uh, github if the collider is damageable then uh, damage it and if there's any sparks that we need to show show off some sparks these are just particle effects at the point of collision at the point of the the shot and then position the laser. Tell the laser where it should be positioned, regardless of whether or not it hit anything. So position laser is going to make sure that that laser mesh is in the right position. I don't actually know if this is redundant, um, the position and the transform. I feel like I only need the transform, but I don't know. I'm going to leave that for now. And if it is colliding, shorten the laser length to go to the point of collision. Otherwise, uh, the default is that it's a, a length 1000 cylinder, you know, a very narrow, long cylinder. Pretty short, not too bad. Here's the laser shotgun. Pretty proud of this one. This was very fun. I, I love Raycast 3Ds now. They're amazing. So laser shotgun has a node 3D named Raycast group. And the code here will add as children of the Raycast group a bunch of Raycasts. 
What's the range of this weapon? Uh, that's important because that's how long our ray casts are going to be. The number of simultaneous shots is how many ray casts there should be. On the ready function, we're going to create a bunch of ray casts and add them to the ray cast group. We will disable all of them by default, again for efficiency, absolutely premature optimization. This is going to be their default uh, target position. And these are the collision bit masks that I'm currently using. I know I should name what 1, 2, and 4 stand for, but for now that's that's good enough. For some reason, I need to pre-rotate all the ray casts. So it's a shotgun, so there's some spread on it, right? And the spread is determined by this variable spread degrees, which are being, is being inherited from gun.gd. For some reason, I like I thought I should just be able to rotate the ray before I actually fire. Like in shoot actual, I do rotate the rays again. But for some reason that I don't understand, if I don't rotate them in ready, the first shot will always have every bullet of the shotgun be centered, like with perfect accuracy. And then after that, they'll be rotated. I don't understand why that is, but this is my fix. I just rotate them first, and then I also continue to rotate them when I'm actually shooting. Rotate it again, even though this will be for subsequent shots. Like I I force an update, like right after that, and I don't get it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Force an update, instantiate the bullet itself, add it where it needs to be added, set its data, and then if the ray is colliding, we're going to uh, call this setup function on the pellet and tell it where it needs to go and what it's going to hit, and otherwise tell it how to just fly off into space right here. And that's it. That's the laser shotgun. Let's check out some of our bullets, our projectiles. And projectile scene is the parent class of all my projectiles, all my bullets. It is also just a Node 3D with a timer on it. I'm gonna attach models to all these things later. And when I say models, you know, I typically mean some just like mesh instance 3D or whatever. I haven't gotten around to the point of creating stuff in Blender or whatever. All right, so every bullet has a speed, uh, a velocity, um, a controller. I decided to have a separate scene that I'm gonna attach to, to guided projectiles that I'm just gonna name controller. Um, so I gotta remember to talk about those in a second here. Damage, timeout, and then all the data that it gets from the gun itself. Uh, the various effects that the bullet needs to know about so it can cause an effect when it hits something. Bullet hole decals, so it can slap a decal on whatever it hits. And then the audio to play when there's a near miss. All right, this is sloppy as fuck, but um, it's what I got for now. It's basically this grace period, which is currently 1 50th of a second, during which if a bullet hits a shield in the first 1 50th second of its life, it will ignore that shield. This is so that I can shoot from underneath shields and deal damage directly to the hull, even if the shield is still up. There is definitely a better way to do this. This is the hack that I'm using for the moment. If a bullet is fast enough, you can definitely fire from well outside the shield and have the bullet penetrate the shield. Set data is where the bullet takes in its shoot data object from the gun and sets all of its many variables here. Physics process is gonna move the bullet. Um, if there's a controller, give it a reference to the bullet itself and the delta time. The controller is actually going to, it's not actually going to move the bullet, it's actually going to alter the velocity, and then the velocity right here uh, will actually move the bullet. Damage and die, all right, so we have collided with something. Now, the base projectile does not have an area 3D, it does not have a ray cast, uh, it does not detect collisions, but this is the method that's going to get called if something was collided with. Body is the thing that was collided with, and if we know what the collision point was, that will be set, otherwise it will be null. Certain bodies should be passed through, like the area 3D that is just playing the audio for a near miss when a bullet like whips past the camera. Also, the, the shield is checked if it's still within the grace period for passing through a shield. Now, if the body is damageable and we're not passing through it, then deal the damage. If there's a collision point, put a spark at that collision point, and that's it. And then cue free the bullet, um, but we're going to do a call deferred on that because there were issues if I didn't do a call deferred. Now, that is our parent class bullet, so we got a bunch of detail 
in here. Um, let's first look at projectile ray. Most of this came from this tutorial right here. I, independently from that tutorial, had the idea that you could make the bullets more accurate by extending a ray cast from where they are currently to where they are going to be on the next update and checking if that ray cast has any collisions, which sometimes worked. And this guy's tutorial did the inverse, which is he would move the bullet and then extend the ray cast from where the bullet was to where it is now. And for some reason that always worked. Whereas doing literally the exact same thing, but before moving the bullet for me didn't work. You know, these are the things that keep us up at night and drive us insane, but it's working. So I'm going to try and, uh, you know, get over it. Minimum length for our ray. Um, this should or could or perhaps just be the length of the like mesh instance or model that you use for the bullet but for now i'm just going to make it one reference to the ray cast does it ricochet or not i implemented bullets ricocheting off of objects which i think is just wicked cool all right call the parent classes uh physics process update figure out the distance traveled by the bullet on this particular physics frame. If the distance is too small, don't use that. Use the bigger distance. Otherwise, use the distance itself. Position the ray and make sure it's the right length. If it collides with anything, get what it collides with. If it's val if it's not valid, just return, just kick out of there. Otherwise, if the body is in a uh, group near miss detector, we're gonna start playing the near miss audio. I looked up this forum right here where you can then say, add to an exception list that body so you'll never hit it again and then force the ray to re-update its collision detection and check if it's still colliding because I was getting and unfortunately I still am intermittently getting this error where if the audio detector is collided with on the same frame that the bullet should have collided with something else typically the the player's shield the shield just gets skipped and you'll see the bullet travel right through the shield without triggering it without damaging it set data mostly just calls the parent classes set data is also going to set the collision mask on the ray because that is how collisions are getting done and it is setting collision exceptions again on the ray so that is why all the ray considerations are what are needed this is the video excuse me that uh describes how to do the ricochet and you can just read through that code if you like it's relatively straightforward and it's very well commented projectile area is basically the other branch in the inheritance tree. Otherwise, either you're a projectile ray or a projectile area. This one has an area 3D with a collision shape that is initially a sphere, though if you inherit from this, you can alter that and alter its size. All right, let's get into the more interesting weapons here. So missile is a projectile ray. In fact, it uses the exact same projectile ray.gd script. It does not have a different script. Really all that's different about it compared to the projectile ray is that, um, it, well, it has a model, a silly little missile model, which I should definitely update at some point and make it prettier. And then it has a physics seek controller to guide it towards its target. And this is going to receive the target through the gun itself. And so everything's just taken care of. Like, I don't even need more scripts for this thing, for this seeker missile. Auto seeking missile is also using the physics seek controller. And uh, we'll look at those controllers shortly. It does have a different script, the auto-seeking one does, um, but it's very short. It's only about 30 lines of code long. It's going to roll uh, because roll looks pretty. It just is more interesting if it's constantly rolling because it's also going to have a contrail that follows behind it, and we saw those little tails. But yeah, the physics process, the only difference between its parent class's physics process is it's going to roll a little. I tried adding in pitch to see if I can make it like corkscrew, um, but that didn't look the way I had hoped. I just commented it out so I could add it back in if I can figure out why that doesn't corkscrew nicely. I mean, it might just be the numbers I'm using, but I don't know. Set data. So the auto-seeking missile is going to just select a target from what's in front of it. It needs to know the person shooting it, whose team is it on? Currently, there's only two teams. There's a red team and there's a blue team. If the shooter is on red team, then grab somebody from the blue team. Otherwise, grab somebody from the red team. Get centermost from group is a function that I've had around for a while in my uh, global script that is going to use whatever the second input is, in this case, the bullet itself, and get the centermost object from this group, in this case, blue team, or in this case, red team, in front of it. So the auto-seeking missile is automatically selecting its targets. Just briefly, we'll go to the global script because you might be interested in that. All right, get centermost from group. So get the tree, get the nodes, get all the nodes in a particular group. Those are all our potential targets. 
we need to start this off over any sort of upper limit. Upper limit would be two pi, which is you know a little over six. So I just made the smallest angle to seven. So this is basically my minimum angle. And as I find smaller angles, I'm gonna update this. Temporary var variable for the angle two. Loop through all my targets. Get the angle to the current target from the person that is looking at it, whatever is the looker. And if it's got an angle smaller than my smallest angle so far, update the smallest angle, update whoever is the most centered target, and once that loop is finished, return the most centered. This works beautifully, and I love this code so much. All right, back to auto-seeking. No, actually, we're done. That's the whole thing. It was super easy once I had all that other stuff set up for it, which is the way it should be. Let's look at laser-guided. Does laser-guided actually not have its own special script? It doesn't. It's just a projectile ray. So um, it's, it's physics seeker controller here is just going to have access to the raycast and it's either going to seek out whatever the raycast is colliding with or the tip of the raycast. And that code is actually in physics seek controller. Shotgun pellet is used by the laser, so-called laser shotgun. It receives information from the raycast about what was hit, if anything, and the collision normal, and who should be dealt damage at the end of its lifespan, at the end of the pellet's lifespan. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to calculate how long it should be alive to reach the point where the raycast said there was a collision, or it's just the tip of the raycast. And then it's going to run for that amount of time, and on timeout, it's gonna deal its damage. Now, it is possible that the target could move out of the way of the pellet, and the pellet will just reach where the target was, and then miraculously deal damage, and that might look bad, like visually, but that is currently the way it's set up, and I'm currently happy with it. And honestly, if the shotgun has short enough range and the bolts are fast enough, it's usually not going to be an issue. Bullet Ray Basic and Bullet Area Basic here are simply um, implementations that actually have a, a bullet. This is my bullet uh, mesh instance. It's just a glowing, you know, green rod. They have them attached, and they're ready to go. These are the ones that I actually drag and drop into the various guns that fire. Uh, likewise with like missile, laser guided missile, and uh, shotgun pellet, and auto seeking missile. So projectile, projectile area, and projectile ray are kind of abstract. They're not complete. All right, so the last thing we got here are the controllers that I'm using for the seeking missiles. Let me figure out where I put those scripts. All right, the folder is movement controllers. So we got the simple seek and the physics seek. Let's start with simple seek. It's just a node with a script attached so that I can drag and drop it into the scene. So move me, it takes the body that it's moving and whatever the delta is, it actually ignores the delta. The simple seek literally just looks at the target and updates the velocity to be in that direction at the speed. It's not obeying physics at all. It will zip straight to its target no matter how fast that target evades it will head towards it. Getting the target position, so if it's laser guided, it uses the laser, it uses the ray, target can get set. If there's still no target, we're just gonna target the origin. This could be bad, but I had to give it something. So I don't know, there we go. Target velocity, we assume it's zero, but if it's not velocity, if it has a velocity, then we'll update that. And then we'll call the global get intercept. This is covered in my video on leading a target, so I'm not gonna cover it here. And that's it, that's the whole simple seat controller. Now the physics seat controller actually inherits from or extends the controller. So it has access to all that targeting position information. It's just simply how it moves is more physics oriented. And this one is actually going to apply some acceleration onto the velocity, right? So this one will steer more like something flying through atmosphere or even flying through space, honestly, because I'm not calculating friction in any way. So it has an accurate steering. That's pretty much it. Um, I, I get the velocity adjustment down here to calculate the desired velocity, and I've got links to the tutorials that I used to figure this all out. I think that's pretty much it. So hope you enjoyed this video. Give a like and subscribe. You know, I've, I've been excited about this project and working on it a whole bunch lately.